A seven-year-old James Jesse sits nervously in the backstage of the circus. His parents appear and drag him out into the crowd. He's afraid of heights, but he knows they're going to make him do the tightrope act. They throw him up on the tightrope and force him to walk across. He just barely makes it, and when he does, the crowd erupts in applause. After the show's over, Jesse's parents count up all their money they made, including some change they pickpocketed from guests. His parents were a trapeze couple, trying to emulate the recent success of the Flying Graysons. They even called themselves the Flying Jessies. Jesse wanted to escape the circus and pursue his own dreams, but his parents told him that following his dreams wouldn't get him anywhere financially, and without money, he'd just be some slob living on the street whose life amounted to nothing. When James turned 18, he started a con acting as a lab tech for Star Labs. He sold Star Labs equipment to LexCorp and even took some for himself. He used that tech to commit petty crimes and his insanity eventually drove him to new limits. He gained pleasure from tormenting people. All of this led up to the night the trickster blew up Central City. Seven jack in the bombs across your beloved city, and they are set to detonate in 12 hours. To make the stakes even higher, I assumed you know that West girl who wrote your article inside her to one of the bombs. Think you can find them all? Oh, and one more thing James Jesse is too formal. From now on, the world can refer to me as the trickster. <laughs> Barry watches the trickster's message in horror, and runs out to Garrison asking for the kill switch immediately. It won't be ready for another four hours. Four hours? Jesse had bombs across the city that'll explode in 12. Then go find the bombs and come back in four hours. Barry suits up in his brand new suit and heads out to find the bombs. We're then introduced to Iris's father, a physicist named Ira West who is watching the trickster's message on TV. He's terrified for his daughter, and he goes to visit his old colleague, Garrison Slate, knowing he'll know what to do. Captain Singh debriefs Chire and Daryl on their mission to find the Jack and the Bombs before sending them off. On their search, they come across Barry. Is that the Silver Streak? Well, I'm not exactly silver anymore. Have you found any bombs? I've been searching for two hours and have nothing. No, but we could use your help. No, what we need is to take him in. Chire, he's a speedster. He could be really helpful. Plus, we could gain some intel on him. Chire agrees to work with the speedster only to gain more information on him, and the three of them continue the search. Barry runs back to Star Labs to get the kill switch. It's been four hours and he's found nothing. He sees Ira talking with Garrison. Mr. West, I've read all your books. I'm a huge fan of your work. Why are you here? You're working with a speedster? You know, working's a strong word when you think about it. I'm here to save my daughter. Iris is your daughter? I felt it'd be way more obvious. How did I not figure that out by now? Anyways, I've been searching for like four hours and I found absolutely nothing. Search again. My daughter needs to come back home safe. Here's the kill switch. It'll only work a few feet away from the bombs. Daryl uses a walkie-talkie to tap into Barry's comms and tells him that he found a jack in the bomb. Barry defuses it and then hears that Chire found another. Barry defuses that bomb, but before he can run off, Chire stops him. Don't act like you're some hero. I've seen firsthand what people like you can do. I promise you that I'm only here to help. But no matter what the speedster says, Chara won't trust him. We learn that they've only found two more bombs in the past two hours and can't find the last three for the life of them. So they do the next best thing 
interact on the trickster. Barry uses Trickster's message to locate him to an abandoned warehouse. Once the three of them arrive at the warehouse, they are immediately hit with a gas that knocks them out. When they wake up, they're chained to a wall and see Trickster staring back at them. You've been napping for two hours. Precious time gone down the drain. Looks like you might have to start making some availability for Miss West's funeral. Barry is furious, so furious that his molecules begin to vibrate without him even knowing it. Barry subconsciously phases out of his chains, then grabs the trickster by his neck, holds him up against a wall, and forcefully asks him where the other bombs are. Shire watches Barry acting out of anger, thinking that his point's being proven. Trickster gives up the location of two bombs, but no matter what, he won't give up the one that Iris is tied to. This is all just some game to him. Barry frees Daryl and Shire, then runs out to defuse the two bombs as fast as he can. Barry runs around Central City, frantically searching for the last bomb. All hope seems lost until Ira taps into his comms and tells him that he found it. Barry arrives at Ira's location quickly followed by Daryl and Shire. Ira is begging for his daughter's freedom, but the trickster just laughs. Barry uses the kill switch, thinking that it's over, but it doesn't work. This one is my magnum opus. I used my own tech. A Star Labs kill switch won't work on it. All hope seems lost. Wait, as a physicist, your abilities make no sense to me, but as a speedster, you should be able to vibrate your molecules so fast that they are able to slip through the molecules of that jack-in-the-box. Then you can grab the bomb and take it somewhere the explosion won't harm people. Barry tries it and we get a really cool scene of him really phasing for the first time. He grabs the bomb from the center, then runs outside and throws it up in the air just in time. Barry then runs back and lands a blow on the trickster, knocking him out. Barry can finally relax. He did it. Or did he? Barry frees Iris, then runs outside to find out that the trickster tricked him. There were eight bombs, not seven. And to his horror, he finds out that the eighth bomb exploded right next to Mikey's apartment building. He runs into the rubble of Mikey's apartment and finds him seriously injured before rushing into the hospital. He can't help feeling to blame for this. He arrives back to the warehouse to make sure everyone's okay and witnesses the trickster being taken away to Iron Heights. Before he can leave, Chire stops him. Who are you? I'm sorry, but I can't tell you that. Chire points his gun at Barry. You are hereby placed under arrest for vigilantism. What? You have the right to remain silent. Anything you say can and will be used against you in a court of law. Chire, you have the right to an attorney. Chire, he helped save the city. Before Chire can respond, he notices that the speedster ran away. That day, Iris writes an article about the previous night, mentioning the Silver Streak's new look and giving him a new name, finally dubbing him The Flash. Barry visits Mikey in the hospital and apologizes. Why are you sorry? You didn't do this. You know that Flash guy took me here? No matter what people say, I'll always believe he's a true hero. Chire sits in his office, piecing together all the evidence. No matter what people say, he'll never believe the Flash is a true hero. Jessica Cruz is taking a hike through the woods when she hears a man screaming. She's horrified to witness a man being murdered, burnt alive. She runs away, but the murderer turns around and sees her. There can't be any living witnesses.